Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar kabira walhamdulillahi kathira. Wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibana wa shafi'ana muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbi zidni ilma. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa sirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين صدق الله العظيم The ayah of the Quran that I have recited to you comes from Surah Yunus in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the mankind, not just the believers. The month of Ramadan that we have just witnessed is the month where Muslims, through their actions and deeds, good deeds, outreach to mankind with kindness, with love, with compassion with charities and through several different means because the message of Quran is universal is for the entire humanity therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when sent his final messenger called him rahmatul lil alameen mercy for all worlds that can exist that you can think of or that you can't think of he is the mercy for all of them. The prophets before were sent only towards certain group of people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the entire humanity and says, Ya Yuhannas, all people, there has come to you instructions, Mawi'ida. From who? From your Rabb, from your Lord, from your Allah. Why? Because there is a cure in these instructions for your hearts. So the health of your heart is very important. And that's what we practice in the month of Ramadan. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have given you fasts as I have given fasts to the people before you. Why? So that you build this piety in you. Now the problem is when we self-define piety, we think piety only lies around following the basic fundamentals of Islam which are about me. That is only half the definition of piety. If I am very pious in myself, however everybody else is sick and tired of me, that's not piety. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a triangle in which on one side, there are rights of Allah. On the other side, there are rights of the beings that you dwell with, of all kinds, shapes, forms, trees, animals, humans, doesn't matter. Your ecosystem, your world that you have been made khalifa of, it's your responsibility to take care of it. And then yourself. That completes the picture. However, if we only concentrate on one side and avoid the others, then the triangle is not complete. We got to balance. Islam teaches it about balancing our lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is a cure for our hearts in the message that is brought to us through Quran. And that's where we go during the month of Ramadan and try to connect with it. So that we draw the message, bring it in our lives and improve ourselves. So there is a shifa for your hearts. Wahudan, and there is guidance for you. Warahma, and then there is mercy for you. And now, after you accept the guidance, the mercy is bestowed upon you. Who do you become? Mu'min, the believer. Because when guidance was presented to you, you accepted it. It's like an offer made to you. You accepted the offer. Once you accept an offer, now, whatever is part of the offer applies to you. 
So this starts with a nas and ends with a believer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now tells the believers in Surah Yunus, in the next ayah, Qul, now that you have believed, now let me tell you my message through my Prophet. So O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, tell these believers, Qul, bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi, fa bi thalika fal yafrahu. That, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, tell these people that in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, now let them be happy. Let them rejoice. And that's why we have gathered here today to feel that moment. We have gathered here because we have worked hard. This is your graduation ceremony. We all are graduating. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept whatever we could do in the month of Ramadan despite our obligations. Because remember, we had families to feed. We have obligations to fulfill. We had bills to pay. We tried our best and that's exactly what it matters. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really, really appreciates the quality and consistency. Do little but do it consistently. Do it consistently. That's extremely important. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this hadith is reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, muttafaqun alayh, that the fast is for me, because it is between me and my servant. And I will reward him or her when they meet me. Nobody knows about the actual amount. We just work hard. We excel. We give our 100% with the correct mindset, with the right attitude, with the positivity. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to take all the negative things out of us. In the month of Ramadan, we practice that any negativity that you would practice would ruin your fast. And any positivity that you would inject back you will gonna get, you don't know how many folds. And after 30, 29, 30 days of fasting, when you come out of that boot camp, you are a different person. The problem comes in, on the day of Eid, we start ruining ourselves. We start going back to the old ways. Some people are rejoicing the night of the 30th, the 29th, that tomorrow we're gonna be Eid, and I'm out of all the obligations. No. Now you're beginning a new journey. And that's exactly how we got to look at it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Man sama Ramadana imanu wa ahtisaba. Then the person who fasts during the month of Ramadan with iman, with faith, and with an intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive his sins of the past. Now we are living in tough times too. Think about last year, we couldn't even gather like we're gathering now. Two years ago, subhanAllah, we had a gathering where no social distancing was not even you know, considered anything. Now, looking at last year and now, our state of mind should be what? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Improvement. Do you think we have, would have come this far? Our lives are not as affected as in other parts of the world. We should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He put us in a country where we have so much facilities of life that other people cannot even dream about. We have to appreciate it. We gotta be thankful. We cannot be just a bunch of whiners and enjoy all the facilities. We have to be thankful. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked those people who are what? Thankful. All these blessings of being able to get to the vaccinations in Nepal, Maldives, Bangladesh, Bhutan, other countries are getting affected. 
So at the back of the mind, while you pray for them, you keep them in your prayers, you're also thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. What's happening in Palestine is devastating, heartbreaking. We don't have words to express that in the month of Ramadan, in one of the holiest places, Masjid al-Aqsa, somebody would do such a hideous crime against the humanity. How could you explain that? There is no explanation. There may be political explanations, but on human grounds, there is no explanation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, you keep them in your thoughts, you keep them in your prayers, you put your head straight, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to work for a goal. The life has to have a goal and a purpose. And the goal and a purpose can only be achieved if we think straight ahead. If you're clear, if you're positive, not clouded. We have to think as individuals and also collectively as a group. This ummah needs to come out of this and represent each other. And that can only happen when we go back and balance our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, if you are grateful, I will give you more. So if you're whining, complaining, my friend got the latest PS5, why am I still sitting on PS4? Now at least you have a PS4. You know, there are two ways of looking at it. The glass could be half empty, but it's also half full. Why don't I have the latest and greatest computer? Well, there's time for everything. There's time for everything. I tell my students sometimes to think about it. If you spend your time lurking around and waste it while in your youth, when you're young, and you struggle in the other half of your life, what do you think? You're not able to enjoy what you are thinking the life should be like for you. But if you work hard now, while you are young, you have less responsibility, and enjoy the other half, you make a decision. Similarly, the decision lies in our hands. While we are alive, what kind of individual are we? How are we representing ourselves? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the day of judgment, will call upon those people that Aina al-mutahabbuna bi jalali. Where are those people who loved each other for my sake? Al-yawma udhilluhum fi dhilli law yawma la dhilla illa dhilli Today I will put them in a shade the day of judgment when there will be no shade except the one provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is reported by Imam Muslim. And this ummah, out of 120 rows that will enter into the Jannah, 80, 8, 0, 2, 3rd will come from the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you think it's easy to represent 2, 3rd people in the Jannah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why made so many opportunities for us to come back, strive for excellence, positivity, and come back strong. Come back strong. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyamu, kama kutiba alaykum min qablikum, la'allakum tattakun. Fasts has been given to you, just like the people before you, so that you become what? Pious. Righteous. And when you have achieved that, and you come to me, let me tell you, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّةٍ وَعْيُونَ These people who are pious, righteous, are the people that will enjoy the Jannah. And it will be told to them, اُدْخُلُوهَا بِسَلَامٍ آمِنِينَ Enter in it in peace and safe and secure. Those two words are very important. 
safe and secure. Security breach on the East Coast, they're out of gas. Stressful life until it's taken over, fixed, people are struggling. Gas prices are rising. Secure and safe is very important in life. Sometimes we don't realize these little things that we enjoy in our life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Jannah, for all the hardships that you may bear over here in this life, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ That anything and everything that you wish for, you desire, you request, it will be provided to you in the Jannah. And nobody will wish for anything that is below the level and the bar of Jannah. I would like to close out with a couple of remarks in the end. Number one, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, reported by Imam Muslim, Inna, indeed, li kulli qawmin eidan. Every nation has their own way of representing their Eid, their happiness, their joy. Wahada Eiduna. This is our Eid. So be happy, be content, be thankful. And then the ayah that I already recited to you, I would like to recite it back again to you. Qul, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi fa bi dhalika fal yafrahu. That it is by the bounty of Allah and His mercy in that you must be blessed.